President Biden is wrapping up his visit to Israel today at the I2U2 summit. The president met with leaders from India, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Israel, and says it's an opportunity to find common solutions to issues like climate change, economic stress, and the COVID-19 pandemic. Shortly after that, President Biden and the Israeli Prime Minister, Yair Lapid, held a joint press conference where Biden reaffirmed the U.S.-Israel alliance, saying the Holocaust cannot be forgotten. Let's listen. We must never forget the horrors which an unchecked hatred can lead. And that's why I immediately, when I returned, I wanted to visit Yad Vashem. When I landed yesterday to bear witness, to remember, to renew our vow of never, never again. Our deputy political director, Avery Harper, joins me live now from Jerusalem for more on this. Avery, the president's time in Israel is, is coming to an end. How do you think this trip has gone so far? Khashoggi's name to the well, he has met with well, Israeli president leaders Biden here, and he's really been focused on uh, finding All ways to create cooperation between Israel and other uh, Arab nations here. Uh, this morning, what was really uh, interesting to me is when uh, folks asked him about when he heads to Saudi Arabia, if he is going to mention uh, Jamal Khashoggi. He is uh, that U.S. journalist who was uh, killed by uh, Saudi forces, uh, and uh, he said that he is not sure if he's actually even going to bring that up. He said he's been very clear about where he stands on uh, human rights at this point. And so after, on the campaign trail, saying that he would make the kingdom a global pariah, uh, the president uh, kind of uh, backtracking on that and not saying whether he will bring that up as he meets with Saudi leaders uh, when he gets to Saudi Arabia tomorrow. Interesting. Uh, Minister, meanwhile, Prime Minister Lapid and President Biden signed uh, Jer the Jerusalem U.S. Israel Strategic Partnership, this joint declaration. How significant is that? <coughs> Uh, it's very significant as uh, both Israel and the U.S. try uh, to find ways to uh, combat uh, the progress of Iran's nuclear program. Uh, in that declaration, uh, both leaders said that they uh, would be willing to use force uh, and use the power of their both of their nations in order to uh, keep Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Uh, there is a little bit of difference in terms of strategy about how to do that. Uh, we saw Prime Minister Lapid today said that he wanted to see uh, more drastic uh, more drastic measures, things like using force in order to uh, combat that threat, whereas uh, President Biden said he wanted to focus on using diplomacy uh, to, to counter uh, those efforts in Iran. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, what else is on the president's agenda for today? And then walk us through the rest of the trip. So President Biden is going to head uh, to meet with President Herzog today. He is going to receive the Israeli Presidential Medal of Freedom. Uh, he's also going to meet with uh, the leader of the opposition, the former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, tomorrow he's going to uh, meet with Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas uh, before he heads to uh, Saudi Arabia, where he's going to meet with Saudi leaders, including uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Uh, and, and that is going to be uh, one of the most controversial parts of this trip uh, as he, uh, again, uh, meets with them despite Despite those pledges of making Saudi Arabia a global pariah, we know that this is all happening in the backdrop of high gas prices at home in the U.S. Uh, we know that the president said he's not going to ask Saudi Arabia uh, definitively uh, and specifically to increase production, but he is uh, asking for that uh, more generally as uh, the U.S. tries to find ways to combat the impact of the Russian war in Ukraine. All right. Avery Harper for us in Jerusalem. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.